Konnichiwa minasan and welcome to the fifth class in the second lecture series on Japanese language and culture. Last week we revised some uh, basic grammar and some kanjis that we had done. So now as you know we cannot have a watertight compartment for what we have learnt and for what we are going to learn now. So while doing new things we will continue to revisit what we have done, what we have studied earlier and uh, I am sure this will help you in your uh, understanding of grammar. You will understand kanji better, you will be able to memorize it, learn it, do the stroke order and also all this going back and learning something new will help you in conversation as well. So last week we did adjectives and the various uh, forms, conjugations of adjectives. Then we also did Thai form of the verb and as you know Thai form of the verb says I want to do what the verb is saying. So now today we are going to do the Te Imas form of the verb which is equivalent to the ing or the continuous tense in English. Now there are two types of verbs action verbs and non-action verbs. Now what does that mean? Well, action verbs show action done by someone or action done by the subject. So what are the verbs over here? You have yomu, nomu, then hanasu. I am writing this specially so that you can also practice your hiragana, kaku, asobu, then oyogu, then taberu. And what are the non-action verbs? The non-action verbs express a state of being, show some state that you are actually living or are in. So what are those verbs? Sumu, motsu, then aru of course is there, iru, then skareru, su, ka, re and ru and then kom. Now sumu means to live, motsu means to have, to possess, skareru means as you already know to be tired and komu means to be crowded. All these verbs you already know. So now with the help of these words, what are we going to do? We are going to learn continuous tense in Japanese. How to say that a certain activity is happening over a period of time. For example, like I am eating, which means I am eating now, I will be eating for another 5-7 minutes and it is just a temporary action. It is an ongoing temporary action, which is equivalent to the ing form of English. So how will we say that in Japanese? We will see it now in our lesson but before that let us listen to the passage. It is a very short kaiwa and most of it you will follow. So listen to the passage very carefully. Watashi no uchi no mai ni koen ga arimasu. Watashi wa mai nichi koen ni ikimasu. Koen ni takusan ki ga arimasu. I'm sure you would have understood most of it. Now I'll do the explanation. It's very, very simple. Watashi no uchi no mai ni koen ga arimasu. Ni koen ga arimasu. So you have done this pattern, place ni something ga aru, watashi no uchi, my house, then watashi wa mai nichi, koen ni ikimasu. So you can also have a over here, I have told you earlier also, with ni you are showing to your listener that there is a purpose for going to the Koen, watashi wa mainichi, time expression. 
そう公園にプレイスにたくさん木がありますたくさん means lots so now as you already know with たくさん you can count the number of things you can measure the number of things so 公園にたくさん木があります it's a counting now 木の下で木の下で子供たちがいつも遊んでいます。いつも is always。And 木の下で you have already done post positions. So in relation to something. So 木の下 under the tree. They because an action is happening. 子供たちがいつも遊んでいます。It's a fact that they are always playing over there. Thus, particle ga. This is easy to understand. That's why we are using this explanation that ga will be used as you know for a fact. Watashi mo tokidoki minna to isho ni sunaba de asobi mas. Watashi mo also. Because children are playing and that has been mentioned. Thus, watashi mo also sometimes. Tokidoki. みんなと一緒に together with スナバ is sand pit で遊びます because of action so place で action and place に existence so over here あります which is あります and います Are you mass for non-living? Are you mass for living? Now this is in Japanese for you. You can go over it. You'll be able to recognize some kanjis. Some you may not. Read the hiragana part, and we will cover these kanjis in some lessons later. So now let us see how the te form is made for all the three verb groups. You have group one. Where the verbs are in u ending or are you ending? So remove the u and are you from the verb in the dictionary form or base form and put t t e that is the double sound. The verb plus the. Now for group two, verbs ending in E R U and I R U. E R U and I R U in the dictionary form again, or the base form. Remove this part, the ru part, and put just T E. A single sound, just T E, not the double sound. Now for group three, you have two verbs only, which is kuru and Suru. Now they are in group three for a reason because they follow a pattern of their own. They do not follow a single pattern. So thus, kuru is kite in te form, and suru is shite in te form. These are exceptions over here. Now I would like to tell you that verb in te form itself has no meaning. By this I mean that it does not say or show anything. It is just a form and cannot have or give any meaning itself. Only after adding imas to it, it becomes continuous tense. Or you can understand what it is saying, what the verb means. Don't end it at te only. Imas has to be added. Now let us see in detail how we can make the te form for the verbs in the three groups. So you have group one, and I just told you that the general pattern followed by group one to make te form is t t e verb plus t t e that is the double sound. Now I have given this also over here. That means that these also are used, but we will do this in the Next slide. Now these are the irregular verbs, and I'm sure now you can make out why I said the next slide. 
because these they form endings are to be used for the irregular verbs of group 1. We will do it in detail in the next slide. Let us first see the verbs of group 1. All verbs ending in ru and u, you can see gambaru to work hard, suvaru to sit, savaru to touch, skuru to make, agaru to go up, step up and harau. You can see it is in u ending which means to pay. So now how will we make the te form? Gambatte. I will write it also. Ga m batte. Suatte. Savatte. Skutte. Agatte. And haratte. So you can see very clearly this ru is changing to this part over here for all the ru ending verbs. Now we have the exceptions. You can see all verbs ending in ku. You can see over here gu, bu, tsu, mu, nu, su, and two vowels. They are all in the exceptions category and obviously as they are in the exceptions category they will follow a different te form ending. So now for kaku let us see kaku is kaite isogu which means to hurry is isoide which is over here isoide then you have tobu which means to fly to unde, you can see it is here. Then matsu, which is to wait, it is matte, the normal te form, which you can see over here. But why is it in the category of exceptions? Because somewhere in the conjugations, it will not follow the pattern which is supposed to be followed by the group 1 verbs. So, thus it has been put over here. Now we have nomu, which is to drink and no nde which is again nde over here, shinu which is to die, again it has nde and hanasu which has shite you can see over here shite and au two verbs will also take tte for example kau can also be over here varau. So, va, ratte and katte. Two vowels in the verb and this is the ending that you will get. So, everything is very clear and you can make the te form very easily now. Group 2 te form is very simple. You just need to remove the ru from here, the ru of the verb and you just have to put te. So, miru means see to see, neru is to sleep, taberu you already know and okiru is to get up, to wake up. So, mite, mite, nete, tabete and okite. This ru gets changed to te. Te form. Now you have group 3 and group 3 has a pattern of its own. So kite and shite in te form. Now I will just write everything for you once over here. Suwatte, suwatte, tabete in group 2. Su varu, suatte, ta be ru, ta be te, then kuru, kite, suru, shite, 
and exceptions you can have kaku for group 1 which is ka i te nomu okay no n te so hanasu hana shite so you have all these written over here you can go over it the ones that are left you can write on your own and revise now i have this written for you for your convenience kodomo tachi wa ima sunaba de asonde imas they are playing now asonde imas so verb in te form plus imas so te itself will not do anything only after you add imas to it then the meaning is going to come so kodomo tachi wa ima now sunaba de sunaba is sanskrit de asonde imas this is the sentence that you have in your passage so asonde imas positive asonde imasen negative past asonde imashita and past negative asonde imasen deshita don't have to bother too much with this at the moment i have written it over here we are going to take this up later at the moment just concentrate on the blue part so asonde imas asonde imasen asonde imashita and asonde imasen deshita are playing are not playing were playing and were never playing so you can make sentences like this as is given over here use different nouns use different verbs and try to make sentences ask questions and answer you can put a ka over here and ask questions do a small kaiwa with your partner now i have written this here as well ame ga futte imas it is raining ame is rain and futte imas is raining so i have put ga over here why ga specially because you can see that it is raining it is a fact that is happening so particle ga now ame ga futte imasen it is not raining ame ga futte imashita it was raining and ame ga futte imasen deshita it never rained now this also i have put over here which we are going to do sometime later but this is the plain form of the verb here imas why we need this is because we'll be making compound sentences we'll be needing more than one verb in a sentence want to say a lot of things in one sentence so at that time we cannot have mas form twice in a sentence so we will be needing this plain form of the verb when we do that then we are going to come back here and learn this now there is some practice for you kore wa nan desu ka kyo shitsu desu yo ne dakara sensei wa nani o shite imasu ka sensei wa ima oshiete imasu kodomo tachi wa ima benkyo shite imasu nani o benkyo shite imasu ka nihongo o benkyo shite imasu so let us see what it is benkyo suru to study so gakusei wa nani o shite imasu ka gakusei wa benkyo o shite imasu seito wa benkyo shite imasu seito is pupils sensei wa oshiete imasu minasan wa sensei no koto o kiite imasu you can use different words and practice like this now tanaka san wa nani o shite imasu ka tanaka san wa ne uchi no soji o shite imasu tanaka san wa hitori de soji o shite imasu 
Soji is cleaning up. Sweeping is soji. Mopping and cleaning is soji. Tarokun wa nani o shite imasu ka? Tarokun wa soji o shite imasu. Tarokun wa ima isogashii desu. So you can use any of this te imasu. This is group 3 over here. Now this is also group 3. Benkyo suru. Group 3. In fact, it is group 4. If we say benkyo o suru, then this becomes group 3. If we say benkyo suru, then it becomes group 4. You can use both. When you say benkyo suru, then it is a verb. But when you say benkyo o suru, then it becomes benkyo is noun and this is the verb. And o is the particle over here. That's the only difference. Meaning is exactly the same. So, benkyo o shite imasu. Particle o is over here. And I have also put it like this so that you can see that there is no difference in the meaning basically. But there is a slight difference in grammar. Now, you have another picture over here. Kusuri o nomu. Kusuri is medicine. So, kusuri o nonde imasu. He is having medicine. Now, in Japanese, it is nonde imasu and not tabete imasu as in English. We eat our medicine or we have our medicine. In Japanese, it is always nonde imasu. Tanaka-san wa kusuri o nonde imasu. Instead of Tanaka-san, you can Add any name over here, Mariko-san, Tanaka-san, Oka-san, Watashi. Now, there is another picture of someone taking a picture of Mariko-san. It could be Taro-kun, it could be Tanaka-san, anyone. Oto-san taking picture of Oka-san. Shashin o Toru. Shashin is picture and photo and uh, Toru is to take. Incidentally, Toru also means to snatch or to take away. Shashin o totte imasu. He is taking a picture. Now, who is taking a picture? Tanaka-san wa Mariko-san no shashin o totte imasu. Picture of shashin of Mariko-san. So, Tanaka-san wa Mariko-san no shashin o totte imasu. He is taking. The action is happening right now. Now, we can also use non-action verbs. Remember, we did in the beginning two forms of verbs, action and non-action verbs. So, action verbs, what do they do? They show that the subject is in a state or is in a situation or is living that action. That is depending on the verb. And so far, we have shown actual action happening at that time. So, now we can also say that uh, they form expresses the state resulting from an action. It shows being in that state or could also show location at a certain point. So, how is that done? Let us see. Tomodachi wa kekkon shite imasu. So, as I said, it shows that you are living a state. Now, if you say kekkon shite imasu, doesn't mean that the actual ceremony of the kekkon, that is marriage, is continuing to happen. No, it's not that. It is a state that you are in, that you are married or you are in that state of being married. Then, this one, tomodachi wa okane o motte imasu. Motte imasu means to possess, to have. Motsu is the verb. Motsu is the verb. So, what do you understand from here? Tomodachi wa okane o motte imasu. He has money. He possesses money. It's not that he is holding something in his hand now. He has money. Now, if I say sumimasen, okane o motte imasu ka? And I put a ka over here. Then what does it mean? It means that do you have money? Now, at this point, 
Are you holding some money in your hand now? Do you have some money in your possession? Now, sumimasen, okane o motte imasu ka? During conversation, from context you can make out that I am referring to now. But tomodachi wa okane o motte imasu means that he has money. Now look at this sentence. Watashi wa ima Tokyo ni sunde imasu. One, please remember sundei mas is going to take particle ni. Place ni sumu. Sumu is the plain form for sundei mas. Now, sundei mas means living or staying. So, this is a state. You are living that state. You are there. And it can also show the place as I said location, your location at a certain point and that is Tokyo. So, watashi wa ima now Tokyo ni sunde imasu. This is a state that you are living. You are living now, you are going to be living for some more time. It is not a short action. Now, can we use iku and kuru? which are motion verbs which show movement in a certain direction in this form. Well, we can, but the meaning is a little different. So, let us see what it is. Now, this you have done. Shujin wa imasen or shujin wa imas or shujin wa ikimashita. Now, let us see in te imas form what it means. Shujin wa shigoto ni itte imasu. So, itte imasu, if you look at it, this is iku, which means movement in a certain direction towards your goal. So, does this mean that the person is continuing to move? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that shujin has, husband has gone to work. He is in office or wherever he works. So, his presence over there is being stated or said. It is not that he is continuing to move towards his destination. Or shujin wa shigoto ni dekakete imasu. Or shujin wa ima dekakete imasu. Both will mean that he is out. He has gone wherever he had to go. He has left this place. Not that he is continuing to leave this place. It's very clear from here that you can use, but this shows location. This shows presence at that point or place mentioned. Shigoto ni. So, shigoto is kaisha. Shujin wa kaisha ni itte imasu. He has gone to office. Now, there's another one here. Tomodachi wa uchi ni Kite imasu. Tomodachi has come home. So, he is already here. He is present here. His existence in the house is shown. Uchi ni kite imasu. And the moment you say uchi and kuru, it means it is my house. If it was for someone else, then tomodachi wa sensei no otaku ni itte imasu. He has gone to sensei's house. Because it is kuru kite imasu, then it is my house. And uchi, which is uh, humble, you could say, is being used over here instead of otaku. So, uchi ni kite imasu. He has come to my house. His presence in my house is shown. Now, you have watashi wa ishukan mai kara. Koko ni kite imasu. Again, koko is place. Ishukan mai kara. Past one week. From past one week, I have been here. Whatever the place is, it could be my house. Jikka ni kite imasu. Or Tokyo ni kite imasu. Whichever you may want to say. So, kite imasu doesn't show that he is continuing to come. It shows presence at a certain place. Now, this I have written for you so that you can see very clearly. 
in te imasu form present and present negative. Present positive and present negative. Kite imasu, kite imasen. Kaete imasu, kaete imasen. Nonde imasu, nonde imasen. Haratte imasu, haratte imasen. Hashitte imasu, hashitte imasen. Tabete imasu, tabete imasen. Mite imasu, mite imasen. Oshiete imasu, oshiete imasen. Tsukutte imasu, tsukutte imasen. Watashi wa ima minasan to hanashite imasu. Watashi wa ima nihongo o oshiete imasu. Minasan wa ima nihongo o naratte imasu. Minasan wa watashi no koto o kiite imasu. So, this is a long sound kiite imasu. Kiite imasu. And rest is all double. So, put the tte haratte imasu. Double sound. Skutte imasu. Practice this and it will help you in conversation. Now, I had said that we are going to do some similar looking kanjis which will make it easy for you to memorize. So, well, the first one we have is mori which is very simple ki, ki and ki which means it's a big forest. So, mori means a big forest and hayashi two keys over here will make it a small forest. This is haya shi. Ha ya shi. Then you have done this a number of times but still we get confused because we don't look at these kanjis very often. We are doing it in a non-Japanese environment. So we need to do it again and again and this is dai. Dai. Which is O O T E O O T E and the basic meaning of this character is O K E. It's used in Daigaku. We did it last time in lesson four. Then this is Hito. You all know very very simple Hito. Hito. Jin and Ni. Now one more for you. Onna no hito. Onna. And you can make this word over here. Onna no hito. Then this kanji we did last time. This is kodomo no ko. So, with onna no hito, you can put this character over here and it makes it into suki, which is like su and ki, suki. Okaasan wa kodomo ga dai suki desu kara, issho ni shite suki ni narimasu. So with this, I would like to end the class right here. Koko made ni shimasho. There is lot of things that you have done today. We have done the te imasu form. There is still more left in te imasu, which we will do sometime later. And in our next class, we will do some kanjis. We will do more of te form and learn how it is going to help in conversation. Now, please digest this. Go home. Make some sentences, practice with your partner and come prepared for your next class. Till then, arigatou gozaimasu.